So again, welcome to the 3D chamfering. This is going to go over programming format and how to use the 3D chamfering function. So 3D chamfering function is available as an option in all current Syncoms and in Mitsubishi Miyano machines only. So this is an option, as I said, and uh, the, the price, you know, I don't want to say anything about price. I don't know what the price may be, but please contact your local distributor um, network and find out about availability and pricing for this function as it may be applicable to your specific machine, specific machine. Crosshole chamfers sometimes create unexpected challenges or in some cases added secondary operations. What are some ways used to resolve? Oval chamfers, inner diameter burrs, or noticeable tool wear. We all know that when you chamfer an OD hole, you're always left with an, uh, an egg-shaped chamfer. So it's deeper on the ends at the higher point of the diameter and narrower on the sides where the diameter dips. This is a common problem and sometimes is less than desirable if you have a very specific chamfer you need to hold. This is where 3D chamfering really accelerates and really shines because it is able to produce a uniform chamfer all the way around the part with very minimal programming. What is G370? G370 is the code that we use specifically to do 3D chamfering. G370 is a powerful function designed to make uniform chamfers on the OD and cross holes. With a user-friendly command format, programming of inside or outside chamfers becomes a breeze. No need to use CAM software, no complex calculations, just plug and play. Interested? Of course you are, and here's why. So you can see that happened pretty quickly. The simple OD drill and a chamfer ID and OD. This is the actual code we use to make this specific part. So as you can see, the top line is for the outside and the bottom G370 is for the inside of the chamfer. We're gonna go over in much more detail as to what these variable, uh, I'm sorry, what these arguments mean in this code. As you can see from this video here, uh, the chamfers are very uniform. They're not heavy on the ends and light on the edges. Very uniform. Very simple. So as you can see from the video, it does not rotate the C-axis. However, it holds C-axis and rotates X, Y, and Z around to maintain the chamfer. Uniform chamfers are the OD and ID. The ID is the bird. Burfee parts can be achieved. So it's very obvious in this picture here which side was chamfered and which side was not chamfered. How many times do you have to run a drill back in there to get rid of that bird, especially aluminum or even brass? You may have some leftover flashing from the drill as it goes through, and you got to run a drill back in. And quite often that flashing will pop itself back into the hole again. So we use an off the shelf double angle cutter. You can get this cutter pretty much MSC. There was really nothing special about it, but there are some dimensions you need to know about your tool. There's a word we use, uh, they use in this called the umbrella angle. So the umbrella angle is the uh, umbrella angle of the tool and B is the diameter of the desired cutting point. C, height of the desired cutting point. G370 is easy to program and just plug and play. Part dimensions and tool used. Outside diameter of this part was 310. Inside diameter was 250. Cross drill diameter was 119. So these are all the parameters we had to work with and then we're gonna go into great detail of showing you how this was used. So as you can see from this command format, G370 is followed by numerous arguments, 
A, C, D, Q, F, and so on. This example here, we're going to give you a list of what you need to use. So in G370, the required arguments A, C, D, Q, F, H, I, and J. A argument, diameter of the cross hole. So cross hole diameter, it was 119. Argument C, width of chamfer. How much chamfer do you want in the hole? 3 thou, 1 thou, 5 thou. Outside diameter of part. So 310 outside, 250 inside. This should be pretty self-explanatory. The Q, Q1 for OD chamfering, Q negative one for ID chamfering. So whether you're going to be working on top of the OD or inside the hole, this is what this is designating. Feed rate, feed rate is going to be per minute. So you're going to have an appropriate feed rate for this tool based on its RPM. In this case, we used uh, 25 inches per minute. H is the umbrella angle of the tool. A 60 degree thread mill was used. The umbrella angle is 120 degrees. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you can imagine this 60 degree angle, if you can imagine yourself under that angle, it would be 120 degree included angle. So it's the angle at the tip looking the other way. I is a cutting point in diameter of the tool being used. So in this case, we wanted to use 45. So in this example, the tool was 60 thousandths according to our print and its angle down to 35 thousandths. So which means that anywhere from 60 to 35 can be used for a cutting point and we used 45 thousandths. It was kind of a mid range number to kind of help uh, target the, the, the meat of the uh, of the tool being used. The J, the cutting point and height for the tool being used. In this example, the thread mill has a total of 20 thousandths in height. The 20 thousandths in height, you can see from the dimensions over there, uh, 10 on each side. For the outside chamfer, we can use anywhere from zero to 10. We used five thousandths. For the inside chamfer, we can use anywhere from 10 to 20 because it's going from the point backwards. So we use 16. Again, this is all according as you can see from our illustration over here on the right side. You can see the uh, the dots are basically pointing toward the middle of the cutting section, cutting surface of this tool to help spread out the forces. The S argument is not required, but then again, the S is extended lifespan function. Similar to argument I, however, you are setting a second cutting point. So what does that mean exactly? Well, the cutting point changes randomly between the diameter specified for I and S arguments. At each cycle running to G370, will automatically select a different cutting point within the specified range. So in this case, it's four and a half, 45 thousandths to 50 thousandths. So there's five thousandths of difference between those two numbers. So what it's going to do is it's going to select a value in between those two numbers every time it runs the G370 to basically use a new cutting point. This will drastically save on the cutting edge of the tool. So if you're cutting on the same edge, part after part, 100 part, 200 parts, 1000 parts, there is going to be significant wear on that tool and it is going to need to be replaced. However, with the expended, extended lifespan function, it allows to spread the wear over a wider cutting surface. I think this is a great function that really helps extend the tool life. So be sure to always add the T1 after the S argument. The T1 after the S argument specifies to use the extended tool life. If you have these two arguments in here, but you do not add the T1, the T1 actually implements the, the extended tool life. It says, yes, I do intend to use it. So it's kind of twofold. You have to give it the I and the S arguments to give it the range. Say, hey, the cutting range is going to be between here and here, but the T1 actually says, yes, I do want to use the extended tool life function. More burfree parts with the extended tool life. 
So ultimately what that means, if you, again, if you're cutting on a very small portion of the cutter, part after part, hour after hour, the extended tool life is definitely going to see some benefit for using more of the surface of this cutting tool. Here's another example of it running on our machine. So as you can see from this example, the function is very fast and it did outside and inside holes that quickly with just those two lines of code. If you had to program this with using possibly G16 or if you had to program this longhand by maybe doing section after section, it may be difficult to adjust, maybe difficult to control the chamfer act, you know, accurately. With this function, it's very easy to use and one line of code get you the entire surface chamfered. Thank you very much for attending our presentation about 3D chamfering. Some common questions we had is one question was, do you have to use a tool like this? You do not have to use a tool like this. This umbrella tool that we used, uh, pretty common. You could use uh, just a regular chamfer tool. Just to, if you didn't want to do the inside of a part, then you could just use a, like a 45 degree chamfer tool of some sort, maybe with multiple cutting edges. That would be totally fine. You just need to provide the, the, the dimensions to make the tool work and cut at the distances and the, and the areas provided for this particular tool. The benefit of using the tool that we described was it was more beneficial for cutting on the inside of the hole. But if you had a tool, if you could imagine a tool like that as some sort of a spotting tool with a 30, 45 degree chamfer on it with two cutting edges, three, four cutting edges and just doing the outside, absolutely you could. There's no restriction with that. Again, I just wanted to reiterate that this is an option. It does not come with the machine. Uh, if you want to know if your machine is capable of it, you can simply go to your machine structure, look for the option. This is 3D chamfering and then contact your local distributor and MCC and find out the availability and the price of this option. I hope this has been informative. I hope you can have a chance to test this function as it is very useful, very time savings, and it can produce burr-free holes quickly, effortlessly, without having to use any complicated CAD systems, any complicated programming systems. If you needed to adjust the hole size, you could definitely just tell the the G370 line, different hole size, you could give it, you know, have the tool change. You can make it, you know, very easily change dimensions on this to make the feature work, to make the chamfers exactly what you want. You know, if you have the same part that comes by again and you need to make the chamfer bigger, change the chamfer from three to five thousandths. And everything, you're going to set this tool like you would set any other tool. No special setting functions required for this function to work. Again, if you have any questions in the future, Please do not hesitate to reach out to your distributor or MCC directly. Thank you very much.